Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, April 8th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. Lots to discuss. We had some big, big Google fluctuations this week, maybe at the tail end of the product reviews update. Google did not confirm it's done yet, which I asked. No, no response yet. Google launched a new search feature they're calling multi-search, which lets you search by image and also by text at the same time. There was some latency with Google Ads and Google Analytics real-time reporting. A lot of Google local stuff around local maps, business profiles, and so much more. Some really cool AI stuff as well, and so much more. So definitely stay tuned. Of course, I'd like to thank our sponsor, SEMrush. Thank you so much for sponsoring SEMrush. Almost every SEO I know uses them, so check them out. They're pretty good. Okay, so first up, um, I posted just the, the monthly Google Webmaster report. It's a really great way to catch up on everything that was big and important around Googleverse in the organic world. It was a pretty busy month. I'm not going to go through it all, but I posted it on April 4th. So if you were on vacation at all, or you just want to refresh what happened over the past month, definitely take a look at that post. It was really, really detailed, and it pretty much catches you up pretty quickly. Also, I discussed earlier that there was some immense Google search ranking volatility earlier this week. Um, it may have been the tail end of the product reviews update. I reported about it on April 6th. It seems like the fluctuations start on April 5th, continue through April 6th, and so forth. Um, a lot of charts from Lilly and Glenn Gabe show that it probably was related to the product reviews update. If you look at their charts, it's specific to those types of websites. Um, and there's lots of chatter saying a lot of changes there and so forth. So, and the tools, you can see a look at these, these tools here. They're all showing significant spikes on April 6th or so. Um, so if you did see certain ranking fluctuations and changes on that date, it seems like it happened on April 6th or so. And it seems like it might've been the product, uh, product reviews update, the tail end, which again, Google has not confirmed it was done rolling out yet, but it should be done rolling out in the next few to several days. Yesterday, Google announced a new feature they're calling multi-search, one word, um, which they actually demoed at uh, Search On uh, a year ago. And basically, multi-search lets you basically take, go open up your iOS or Android app, Google a search app, take a picture of something or use a screenshot of something, um, and then it will search by that image, but then you can actually add text to that image. So if you're looking for, I don't know, you take a picture of a person with a dress, and has a lot of other things there. You can like do a search for whatever, dress, and then refine that search with text, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's uh, rolling out now. It's actually on the US English results, which you can actually play with. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and we'll see how many people use it. It's a new way of searching. I'm pretty, I thought it was pretty unique and imaginative. Uh, but again, they, they announced this back at Search On, so we saw it coming. Uh, also, Google said a lot of things around MUM in that blog post, or one thing or a couple things around AI and MUM. They're not using MUM for that yet. They may in the future, which is what they've been saying since they announced MUM. They're using MUM for like very few things right now. I'm not gonna go, but basically three things. And they keep saying they're gonna use it for more and they haven't really yet. So we're waiting to hear from them on when MUM's gonna expand. Uh, Google's John Mueller said that thin content issues are really not site specific, are really site specific and not page specific. So obviously you have to have thin content across your pages. So if you have lots and lots and lots and lots of thin pages, thin content pages, yeah, that's going to affect your overall site. But he said, if you have, I guess, basically a, a piece of thin content here and there, it's not going to affect the overall site. And those types of thin content issues, not really penalties, but quality issues, affect a site as a whole and not on a page by page basis, which is John Mueller saying. But I assume there are some cases where, yeah, thin content is not going to rank well on a page by page basis as well. Google does not care or does not understand or does not realize if you outsource your content. As long as the content is quality, Google doesn't really care. So there's no, nothing specifically bad about outsourcing your content to have somebody else write it. If you wanna pay me to write your content, which I won't do, but if you wanted to, and somehow you made me write your content, and, I, and I, technically that would be outsourced content, and maybe the content would be good, I'm not sure. Um, but generally, content Google doesn't really know if a piece of content's outsourced or it's written in-house or by you know, inside a company or not. It just looks to see if that content is quality or not, which is pretty interesting for Google to say. Um, so I've been tracking. I started a new blog that I told you about. It's basically called, you can check it out, Lucid Insider. Um, and I didn't link to it for the first couple weeks or so. Um, then I wanted to see how fast it would take for Google to actually show links in the Google Search Console links report. 
And I asked John Mueller, how long does it take? And he said around seven to 10 days or so, or within a couple of weeks, he said. And I tested that. I put a link to it um, in a newsletter in Search Engine Language, I guess it has some type of front end facing website for it. And that link showed up within 10, seven to 10 days. And then I saw this morning, which was about two weeks or so after, or less than two weeks, about a week or so after I linked to it from Search Engine Roundtable, that it was the links report exploded. It's showing a lot more links and so forth. So it does take about a week or two for the links report to pick up your links. Um, not that Google's slow to pick it up. Google will index stuff, but the link report is updated every few days or so, like other, other reports. Plus, Google only shows a sampling of those links. So you never know if Google's going to show the most recent link or not because they only show a sampling of links. Um, so that's the issue with the, that type of report in terms of how fast it actually shows stuff. In terms of fast in Google Search Console, if you do use the remo removal tool in Google Search Console, and then you want to remove or cancel the removal that you issued, that cancellation usually takes a couple hours, a few hours. John Mueller said it takes um, about a day. He said that before. He said it's usually very quick. It usually takes less than a day, he said. But it seems like it takes a couple hours. Um, it was tested by uh, somebody at SEO, which we documented here, and you can definitely take a look at that. So it only takes a couple hours for a removal request to be canceled. Lizzie Sassone and Martin Split had a special guest on their podcast, Ryan from Google, who's very, very involved in the structured data side. He's been at Google for over 11 years now, I believe. And he first started working at Google um, with structured data, specifically on the data highlighter. In any event, they talked about on their search off the record podcast, which is great. Take a look at it. Uh, the past, present, and future of structured data and more information around structured data in general. Uh, but it's really interesting to see the past, present, and future. Basically, the past was let's crawl the web and try to figure out the structured data from the content itself. Then it was like, all right, we kind of need to like ask people to give us the structured data. So let's give them a way to give it to the JSON or um, RFID or other methods, schema. And that's been working well. And now they have to va validate that that works well by using other machine learning to actually go ahead and figure out, are they telling me the truth in structured data? And in the future, Google wants to do more of this with maybe CMS platforms and other machine learning types and methods to, to go about this, which is pretty interesting. Definitely recommend you check it out. I talked about the past, present, and future. I kind of like lay it out for you easily so you don't have to actually listen to the whole podcast, which is worth listening to if you have time, but it's about 30 minutes. Uh, Google Ads has a new policy. Shocked they didn't have this before, but basically you can't share PII information, uh, financial fraud, identity theft, harmful direct content or harassment on, on using Google Ads. They don't want that type of content to be promoted in Google Ads. Uh, Google Ads has some latency issues, and it still does, although they said they fixed it, um, starting April 1st with the RSAs and the ad approval process. So a lot of people complaining this week that it's just so slow, the Google Ads console. You're not alone. Google Ads is aware of it. They said they fixed it, um, I believe, on April 6th or so, or 7th. Uh, but some people are still having issues with it. We'll see. Talking about latency issues, um, the past few days, Google Analytics had some uh, latency issues with Google GA4 and, GA, and, U, and Universal Analytics 3, so UA3, um, specifically with real-time reporting. I didn't notice this myself, but there are lots of complaints. Google finally confirmed those issues after basically two days of complaints from analytics users. Uh, they, co they confirmed it last night, and they said they fixed it, but it doesn't seem to be fixed. A lot of people are still complaining as of this morning. So if you are noticing real-time analytics issues, you are not alone. Google added to their help docs um, in the search and basically how to rank well in Google search, um, a new section called in-store products, which in-store products is not new, um, but basically they added to the help docs that into the section about update your business information for better visibility, which is in the section of how to improve your local ranking. So there's now a big debate about, oh, if now Google's confirming that if you add in-store products, it will help you rank. I asked Google to confirm this to tell me what's going on, but it's also under the section of how to get better visibility for your business. And of course, if you have in-store products listed in your business profile and you get the little tags that say this, pro this store has this product or it has a carousel of products, you're going to have better visibility by definition in the Google search results, meaning you'll, people will see it more because they have those extra attributes or images of the products. Now, of course, it's in the how to improve your local rankings update uh, help doc. And because of that, maybe people are saying it helps you improve your rankings. It could be. I don't know. I asked Google to confirm that. There's a lot of debate around this. Um, last time Google updated that help document, it was a lot of debate and they actually removed something. So they have to be careful with that doc. Also, um, pretty cool. Google announced yesterday that they have new AI 
which they are going to be using for 20 million business listings in the next six months to go ahead and automatically update the business listings hours. Often they get the wrong hours and they want to go ahead and make sure the hours are correct so people who go to those businesses are not stuck there waiting. Um, now they're using not a lot of AI. You know, it's components of AI. Basically, they're looking to see um, things like the live traffic in the store by users with either Android apps or iOS apps that are going to the store, seeing if the people are there. They're actually using Street View imagery to see the sign hanging on the doorpost of that listing to see if um, those hours could actually be interpreted from that store, store the, that post, on the, the sign on the door, which is pretty crazy. They're using things like, um, like what are the stores nearby? What are their hours? Um, they're using obviously Google Duplex and they're using a bunch of other methods to actually figure this out. Plus Google's going to actually use AI for other purposes, not just that, but also for like finding potholes, street signs, um, busyness in the area and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting to see Google explore more with AI. Of course, they're using AI for everything. They throw out the word AI all over the place. AI, AI, AI. Um, but again, it's, it's AI is basically made up of many, many algorithms and many, many factors. And then the AI figures out what to use based on that. Also in the Google Business Profiles, they have a new recycling attribute which is going to be added to your business profile if you do offer recycling services. So if you order like battery recycling or whatever, you can add that to your profile and Google will show that recycling icon there. Google Business Profiles um, review tool. So if you want to like manage your reviews, they launched a year ago a review tool which was only available to businesses that had under 10 or profiles, uh, Google profiles that had under 10 business listings under them. Now it works for if you have basically unlimited business profiles listed under you. So if you're a local SEO and you manage lots and lots of listings for people, you can now use this cool reviews tool, which is great. Uh, Google Maps has deeper integration with iOS. So new Apple Watch directions, um, new shortcuts, new Siri stuff. In addition, they also show toll prices. So you know how much it's going to cost you to get from destination point A to point B. Uh, they also show traffic lights and stop signs, which is pretty cool as well. And the Google Business my Google My Business app is going away. We knew this was going to go away. When Google rebranded Google My Business to Google Business Profiles, Google said the app is going to go away. You should manage your business directly in the Google Maps app or the Google Search app or on the website. Um, and for smaller businesses, again, Google My Business app is going away. So keep that in mind. We don't know exact date, but Google basically sent out emails to everybody saying it's going away. In any event, thank you so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. If you are having FOMO for not bringing Brighton SEO, you are not alone. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz. This is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, April 8th. And this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. Again, thanks to SEMrush for sponsoring. Deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you, SEMrush. Everyone have a great weekend. See you guys next. Goodbye.